Hi there, Kim Kunkel here, owner and designer over easydigitals.com, Photoshop backgrounds and templates for photographers. Today, I wanna to talk to you about extractions. I put a Facebook post out asking people what they struggle with the most, and a lot of people said they struggle with removing a person from the background, which is also called an extraction. And one particular person, Scott, said that he would be willing to send me a photo that he was struggling with. He actually sent me several photos that were pretty similar. And so I am going to show you what I did with his photo today. I think you're gonna be kind of surprised at the direction I went with it. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this image. Okay, so this is the image that Scott sent me of his son. And the first thing I noticed right away was that it's not in focus. And I think it's possible that this uh, part of the background is more in focus for some reason than the actual athlete. And his focal point was right around in this area. So I know that he had his focal point on the athlete, but for some reason it just uh, is possible that maybe a different lens or something would help with the focus. I had a friend of mine look at it who is really technical with photography and I am putting his recommendations for this photo below in the notes for this photo. Take a look at that and I hope you enjoy getting a little bit of feedback from an expert on how to improve the photo. But let's say, you know, this is the photo you have and it's the only photo you have and you want to do something with it. So let's see what we could do with it. <clears throat> so I would, um, as you can see here, it's going to be difficult to get an extraction here because you need a sharp edge for the selection tool. And the selection tool is, is not going to work very well here. But I'm going to go ahead and um, start using it so that you can see what's gonna happen. And I think this is what is happening to a lot of people when they're trying to do extractions. If the photo isn't sharp because you just couldn't get close enough, there's still, there's still things you can do. So let's see what we can do. But I think you're still gonna be surprised at what I did. Because when I look at a photo, um, I have, uh, many tools in my head that I can use not just I don't always go to the exact same tool it depends on the situation so let's just see what happens with the extraction tool all right I'm not gonna do the whole thing I just want to see what it's gonna do with a small area so let's come over here to refine edge and as we can see it's a pretty rough extraction and even if I come over here to the smart radius and see if it can improve, it doesn't really help. I can come over and maybe see if this will help. And that helps a little bit, but I still have a lot of issues. So I would not use the extraction, um, the quick selection tool for this photo. I would then say a photo like this probably needs the pin tool. I like using the pen tool, but I hate using the pen tool for extractions because it's very time consuming. And for $1.50 or 75 cents, I can send it out and have it cut out by an expert. So that's what I would do. And that is what I did do. So let me show you that. Okay, so I sent this off. Let me see, view fit on screen. So I sent it out to retouch up and I had it extract extracted. Now what they send back is something like this. That isn't always exactly how I want my extraction to look. So I am going to copy this over to my original. So I'm gonna to come to the image and then I'm gonna to come to duplicate layer and I'm gonna take it to the other photo. So now I have my photo my extracted photo on top of my background. 
So now I can just hover over this and I can press down my control key or the command key on a Mac and I can select. Then I can come down, duplicate the background. I always like to just make a copy and I can mask. Let's see if this. So now I have an extraction that is a mask, which is better than having it as just a ping uh, file where everything's cut out. Because now I can actually work with this photo as if it were just a selection. So here is the selection that we have. And they actually did a pretty good job of actually even making it a little bit blurry. With the hair, I think they did a really good job. If this was really sharp because they used a pen tool, then I could blur my mask and I could add a blur to this to make it blend to the background better. So one thing that you want to remember is when you have a, a photo that's a little bit out of focus, you can't put it on a sharp background. You're going to have to put it on a, a little bit of a blurry background or maybe even blur out the background even more than the photo so that it looks like the depth of field is further back. So let's go ahead and pull up the background that I decided to use with this. So I decided that it would be kind of cool if he was throwing this off of a city building. So I chose this background of the city building. And this is back, Layered Backdrops Volume 4. And I'm going to go ahead and select your photo here. And I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to do something else before I, before I do this. Let me see. I'm going to turn that back on. Okay, so I want to make sure I have a shadow for his feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to change it to black and white. So I'm going to come to um, black and white. And then I'm going to add levels. And let me hold on here. I need to turn off this layer so I can see. And I'm just going to make sure it has some really good contrast. So I like that. I think that looks good. And then I'm going to merge these layers. And these are going to be for my shadow. Merge layers. And I'm going to add a mask. And I'm going to fill the mask with black. So since my black is underneath here, I can press Control backspace and it fills it with black. So then I come over to my mask with a white brush. My cap lock was on so the brush size wasn't showing. And then I can just bring this out which doesn't really matter right now but it will later. So then I can go ahead and turn back on my play, my athlete. After you create your black and white shadow layer you need to change the blending mode to multiply. Before we move him over into our background, let's add a little drama with Topaz Labs. I'll go ahead and add a link to this in the notes underneath this video. And I'm going to use HDR. I don't like it overdone. Or this one. Let me see. Okay, that looks good. And I'll go ahead and click apply. So that's just up to your taste of how you want that to look. And click OK. Yeah, I think that looks better. So now I'm going to grab these two layers, the, the layer with my athlete and then this one that says levels is actually the shadow so I'll just change the name of that. I'm going to grab these two layers and I'm just going to pull this out and I'm going to drag these in. That's kind of how I like to do it. And I'm just going to say everything's good to get this in here. Okay my athlete is uh, I want it to say where your photo your photo here Okay, so now I have my athlete in here and I need to make sure the sizing works for this. Um, one problem I see is that I know this is a parking spot right here because I took this photo and 
I don't think he would be that big next to a parking spot. So I'm going to make him smaller. To get this um, layer to move without everything else moving, you need to have this turned off. Otherwise, it will just select whatever's on top. So I like to turn that off when I'm moving things around like this. So I have this here and look at how this shadow really makes a difference in selling it, especially on this foot. You definitely don't want your athlete to look like he's floating. So if your photo does not come with a shadow that you can use, then you need to create one with uh, like a dark uh, paintbrush or something just because that is one dead giveaway that your photo is a composite is when you can cannot see a shadow on your athlete and you definitely need to work on that so I see a line here so I'm going to see if I can get rid of that line right here turn my flow up okay where'd it go right there okay so that is a start. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the rain for this photo. I'm adding an extra little section to the video right now that I forgot to add to the original video, which is that I mentioned adding a blur to the background and you would come to, for, for this backdrop, you will need to merge these two layers. So I'm going to go right click them and merge layers. And then I come up to filter blur and you can either do a lens blur or a Gaussian blur and just you know decide the nice thing about the Gaussian blur is that you can see what you're doing on your screen with the athlete so I'll do filter blur Gaussian blur and you can see it it shows you a preview so you just kind of want to try to figure out where you want that blur to be and another thing you can do is you can flatten the entire image and add noise and that can also sell the illusion. Let's see, let me get up to the top here. Filter, noise, add noise. Um, let's see. So that is another way that you can sell the illusion. And I'm going to come to my one thing that really sells these photos that I learned from Joel Grimes is to add a back glow. I make the back glow in my own way, which is I add a outer glow in white and as big as I can. Then I come to to the outer glow layer and click create layer. Now I have the outer glow on its own layer and I can press filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I can blur it to how I want it. And for some reason, making this separation between the background and the athlete really does sell the illusion much better. And I just press Control J to make a copy of it. So you can decide, you know, how much of a glow you want and you can turn it up and down. So that's one thing that I like to do. Then I can come over to these um, different layers and play with the different coloring. I think this looks pretty good. You would have to decide if you wanted maybe a photo filter instead. There we go. You can just arrow through these and see if there's one that you like. I kind of like this one. So I'm going to stick with that. And then one thing I like to do is I like to make a, I like to flatten everything down by pressing control shift alt E, make a flat layer. And then I come over to my rad lab and I just look through um, and see if anything jumps out at me as something I might want to do. I normally, I love lights on for many photos, but not for this one. This one is kind of fun. You can see the thumbnail. It just 
you know. Uh, it, I don't know. I just love, love this program. And I'll put a link to it below. I am an affiliate because I love it so much. Okay. And sometimes I like to burn the edges because that brings the attention to the athlete. Pool party is a fun one. But as you can see, there's lots of things you can do in here. I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Um, I don't know if I like that. I'm going to undo that. I actually do like this gradient map on. And so let's say you're done with this and you're, you've done everything that you can to sell the illusion and you're still not happy with it. One final thing you can do is I'm going to make a flat. I'm going to do control shift alt E to make another layer this flat and I'm going to come to my alien skin snap art Four. this is super fun because look at everything that you can do with this so you can make a painting out of this and just think how fun that would be to have that in your home of your son um, you know throwing his discus I think that's what those are called um, I just and then you can actually change the brush size so you get more detail in the face. So you can do so much fun stuff with this. Stroke length, color variation, super fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. And now you have a piece of art. And this just shows you that you can take any photo, even if it didn't come out of the camera so great, and you could make a piece of art with it and don't be discouraged just because your photo isn't perfect because there's always things that you can do with it to save it. If it's like that one photo that you have and you didn't get any other shots, then you can make something artistic with it. Extractions can be very difficult, but there are a lot of tools at your disposal. And I want to really thank Scott for sending me this photo and taking a chance and letting me mess with his photo and make a tutorial to help you guys out. Please send Scott some appreciation below, thanking him for sharing his photo. If you guys ever want to share your photos for me to mess with, please feel free and we'll see if we can do something that will help everybody. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more like it, post below. I'll put links to all the filters I used in the, sh the notes for this tutorial. It'll probably be a link to my blog post or it will be if you're on the blog post right now, then it'll be underneath with the information. So I hope you enjoyed this. Click like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much. Have a creative day.